Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is present with us today. And for those who will listen later on the archives, this is Saturday, December 18th, 2021, on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar of the year 5782. It is Tibet 14, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Before we get started with Shabbat service, I want to do a few announcements. Um, for this upcoming week, we have our Bible study. This has been an ongoing Bible study, and we've been using the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, the TLB. And this upcoming week, we will be um, completing the book of Revelation, reading chapters 15 through 22, which will complete our Bible study through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version. We, we are going to continue with Bible studies, of course, for our ministry. And the next version of the Bible, which we will be uh, starting, will be the English Standard Version. We're going to go from Genesis to Revelation with that as well, all 66 books of the Bible. And we'll probably do what we did with, uh, with the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version. We'll probably do an introduction week. Uh, give you a little background on the English Standard Version. So it won't be a very long um, study for that week. And then we'll we'll dig right in um, to uh, with the Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible. So we'll get into how, how that version of the Bible is laid out uh, in comparison to um, the TLV, which we have we are completing. Um, Tuesday evenings, we have live and real-time meetings on our freeconferencecall.com channel. It is a dedicated channel for our ministry, and everyone is welcome to join us. We do prayer requests. We we do prayer. We, we definitely discuss freely um, the... the the things that we're encountering in our world today and how they relate biblically and, and how to really discern because there's a lot of lack of discernment that's going on. And, you know, the evil one is striking fear everywhere. And we need to, fear is not of the Lord. So we need to be sure that, you know, whose report we're listening to and so it's it's really good to have these discussions and really pick it apart um, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So um, we also we also have hosted musicians and we've hosted writers. So that's a call out to anyone who has this particular type of ministry, or if you have a book, if you have an event coming up that you want to uh, promote, we would be glad to host you. You just need to contact Pastor Nall or myself. And we will set something up on our channel. We'd be glad to do that for you. It's our ministry's way of tithing into yours. And we do have the ability, yes, to do MP3 recordings and MP4 recordings. So, um, and I have done that for those that we have hosted in the past. So um, bear that in mind if you um, are, if, if this interests you, absolutely. Uh, we would be glad to do that for you. We have also used this channel for teaching purposes um, as well. We did a seven-week series on, on the, the seven churches of Revelation. Um, so we, we do use this channel um, for a variety of things. So come join us. You can join by phone. There is uh, numerous countries that have free access um, I do post to uh, the four social media platforms of uh, Facebook, MeWe, USA.Life, and Gab as well. And um, so there's a there's a link that you can click on to, and you can find your country's number to dial into, and that's actually geared towards our channel. And then what you would be doing is entering the access code upon the prompt, and the when you pull down the drop down menu it's going to look like all the 
the calls are told. This is the free list that Free Conference has given to us. No one has been charged. And actually, the USA number even says toll, and, and that is not that is not so. So um, come join us. Um, and uh, I believe if you're if you're coming on from another country, you would dial your in-country number and then the access code. Um, you could try it beforehand, before Tuesday evening. Um, you can have access. Um, the only thing is, is it's going to just tell you the host has not arrived yet. When once you 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 gained access, the host has not arrived, and I'll start playing music. So um, so at, you you can actually test it out. The other way that you can join is by the website. You would have to uh, download the web. Uh, the web download or the app download if you're using your phone, um, and it is safe to do that. Um, I have uh, used freeconferencecall.com for quite some time because we used it for college classes. Um, so what will happen is you just download it and, and run it uh, when it asks you if you want to run it and go ahead and run it um, and then follow the prompts into the conference. Um, what you'll find is there's a built-in microphone. There's also a chat area. Um, so it, it is a very nice conference, online conference setting. So um, anyway, you can join by, that. that's another means to join. So um, either way, and yes, you can even join, you can come in and join by the web and you can join by phone if you have a computer. I have, I have done that before. Um, but anyway, that is all I'm going to say about that. And we're going to open up. We are going to open up Shabbat service with our opening prayer and, and get Shabbat service started. Avina Malkano, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for Shabbat first and foremost. Um, this is a day that you sanctified and you made it holy. And it is the seventh day of the week. It is Saturday. And we thank you, Father God because you did set that example and it is it, it you do have it in your word that in six days you worked and on the seventh day you rested and you're a good father and you set your example for your children and we are here to honor you to worship you to adore you and we ask your holy spirit to come guide us direct us lead us through shabbat service and bless us with your presence Open the eyes of, of our heart, the ears of our heart, that we can see and hear the things that you want us to grasp from this service and integrate it into our being and our walk with you. We love you, Father God, in the mighty name, the precious name, the name above all names, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. In Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus said, and I blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. That is actually one of the Ten Commandments. And join with me now the Lord's greatest commandment, and that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse, beginning with verse 4. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevot Malhuto Leolam Bayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. 
And the second greatest commandment, Yeshua stated, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, there are three blessings. The first one is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants. For the sake of his name and love, King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, Blessed are you, Adonai, shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might? And who can compare with you, O king? who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish. You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is holiness, Kedusha. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor, O God, and your great love answer me with the truth of your salvation. And as Cain, Tree of Life Declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. By Yom Hafu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be a God, and his name, God. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created by his will. And may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon and say, amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation, spoken in the world and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. And he who, may he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Devar HaKayim, Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. And say with me now Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, Sanctified be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather Benaiah Israel to worship. We're going to do that now. to pause it now 
for you to go listen to some praise and worship music. I cannot incorporate it in this upload because of copyright infringements. And this gets uploaded to YouTube and the four different social media platforms. Now, I do post songs before this upload. So there will be songs before and songs after. after. And usually the songs before are, are geared towards uh, the first half of Shabbat. And the, the songs after are for the second half, the half of Shabbat. And I usually post um, the upload to Shabbat in two, two segments. I have been doing that um, with this new platform and how it's how it's laid out. So praise and worship is is actually one of the most important segments of any service. Um, it is our time to give honor and glory to the Lord, which we we give honor and glory in everything that we do. Um, but this is we're we're proclaiming it in song and singing to our Father in heaven. So. I, I don't want this to, just because we're pausing it and not incorporating it in the upload, uh, for it to be missed because it is part of service. And um, please do take time to do some praise and worship. Um, if you don't want to use the songs that I post onto social media, if you have your own songs that you, you prefer to listen to, uh, by all means, please do. I'm going to pause it now, and then we're going to come back with the Torah portion. Um, of Shabbat service, and then we will go into that into a recapping, and then half Torah and a recapping, and close out then the first segment of Shabbat, and then we will take a short break, and then come back for the second segment of Shabbat service. So I'm going to pause it now for you to go ahead and listen to some praise and worship, and we are going to begin the Torah portion, and this week's uh, portion is Parashat. Bayeki, and he lived. And so we're going to be covering Genesis chapter 47, verses 28 to chapter 50, verse 26. And this will actually complete the book of Genesis. And next week, the, the last week of December, um, we will be beginning the book of Exodus with Parashat Shemot. So this week we are going to conclude um, the book of Genesis. So we're going to begin now with Parashat Vayeki, and he lived. Joseph's promise to Jacob. Now Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. As the time of Israel's death, now, now remember, God renamed Jacob Israel. Okay, this is this is why we're interchanging here, um, Jacob and Israel. It's the same person. As the time of Israel's death drew near, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor, favor in your eyes, please put your hand under my thigh and show me faithful kindness. Please do not bury me in Egypt. When I lie down with my fathers, you must carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. So he said, I myself will do according to your word. Swear to me, he said. So he swore to him. Then Israel bowed down in worship on the head of his staff. Chapter 48, Blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh. After these things, someone told Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. When someone told Jacob, saying, Behold, your son Joseph has come to you, Israel summoned his strength and sat up in the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, El Shaddai appeared to me in Luz, in the land of Canaan, and blessed me. He said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and multiply you and turn you into an assembly of peoples. And I will give you this land to your seed and after you as an everlasting possession. Okay, this is a covenant that was never broken. This was a promise. God does not break promises. Man does. And I want to make that very clear. The Bible says this was everlasting. It was given as an everlasting possession. So now, your two sons, 
who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, they are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just like Reuben and Simeon. Any descendant of yours whom your father, whom you father after them will be yours. They will be identified by the names of their brothers for their inheritance. Now, as for me, when I came from Paddan, to my, to my sorrow, Rachel died along the way in the land of Canaan, while we were still a distance from entering Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. So Rachel's tomb is, out, it is in Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, who are these? Joseph said to his father, they're my sons whom God has given me here. Then he said, please bring them to me so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes had, had grown heavy with old age. He could not see. So he brought them near to him and he kissed them and hugged them. Then Israel said to Joseph, did you see your face? I didn't expect and look. God has let me see your offspring as well. Then Joseph took them from his knees and bowed with his face down to the ground. Then Joseph took the two of them, Ephraim, which his with his right hand across from Israel's left, and Manasseh with his left hand across from Israel's right, and brought them close to him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and placed it upon Ephraim's head, though he was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has shepherded me throughout my life to this day, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, may he bless the boys. And may they be called by my name and by the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. May they multiply to a multitude in the midst of the land. When Joseph saw that his father placed his right hand upon Ephraim's head, it was wrong in his eyes, so he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, not like that, my father, because this one's the firstborn, put your right hand upon his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also will become a people, and he also will become great. But his younger brother will become greater than he, and his seed will be the fullness of the nations. Then he blessed them that day, saying, In you shall Israel bless by saying, May God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. Thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Look, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. Now I myself give you one portion more than your brothers that which I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Now, Jacob referred to Adonai to God as El Shaddai, which that name means God Almighty. And I just want to mention um, when um, Shabbat is brought in on Friday night, the part of the blessing of the family, when you're blessing the sons, um, it is stated, may God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And that refers back to what um, we just read with um, Jacob and the blessing with Ephraim and Manasseh. And of course, the blessing for the daughters, may God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. It's also interesting when you think about how Jacob, Jacob was the younger of the twins, remember um, Esau and Jacob, the story of, of that, and how God told Rebekah that the younger would, would, be, would rule over the older. And so here we have that same pattern as well. Chapter 49, Jacob speaks over his sons. Now Jacob called his sons and said to them, gather together so that I can tell you what will happen to you in the last days. Now think about the last days and the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes. Be assembled and listen, sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, my firstborn, are you. 
my vigor and firstborn of my power endowed with extra dignity endowed with extra strength like water boiling over you will not have extra for you got up into your father's bed when you defiled a maid's couch simeon and levy are brothers instruments of violence and remember what happened in shechem after dinah was defiled they actually led that they are instruments of violence are their knives in their secret council may my soul not enter in their contingent may my honor never be united for in their anger they slew men and in their self will they maimed in their self will they maimed oxen cursed be their anger for it was strong and their rage for it was cruel i will disperse them in jacob i will scatter them in israel judah you are your brother you judah so you are your brothers will praise you okay this is the tribe of judah judah means praise your hand will be on your enemy's neck your father's sons will bow down to you a lion's cub is judah from the prey my son you have gone up he crouches lies down like a lion or like a lioness would who would rouse him the scepter okay will not pass from judah nor the ruler's staff from between his feet okay this is very significant when we're when we're talking about yeshua yeshua is from the tribe of of judah and no the scepter will never pass from judah because Yeshua is our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. He is the ultimate King. Okay. The scepter will not pass from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs will come. Yeshua. To him will be the obedience of the peoples, binding his foal to the vine, his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine. And in the blood of grapes his robe. His eyes are darker than wine and teeth that are whiter than milk. Zebulun will dwell by the seashore and be by a harbor for ships. His distant border reaches Sidon. Issachar is a strong boned donkey lying down between two saddlebags. He saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant. He leaned his shoulder to bear a burden and became a forced laborer. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Let Dan be a serpent beside a stone, beside a robe, a road, a viper beside a path who strikes a horse's heel so that its rider falls backwards. For your salvation, I wait, Adonai. So some of the, a lot of the judges will come out of the tribe of Dan. Samson is one of them. Gad, attackers will attack him, but he will attack their heels. Asher, rich is his food, he will provide delicacies fit for a king. Nephtali is a doe let loose who offers words of beauty. A fruitful son is Joseph, a fruitful son beside a spring. Daughters, walk along a wall the archers were bitter and shot arrows and were hostile towards him yet his bow was always filled and his arms quick moving by the hands of the mighty one of jacob from there a shepherd the stone of israel from the god of your father who helps you and shaddai who blesses you with blessings of heavens above blessings of the deep that lies below blessings of breast and womb the blessings of your father surpass the blessings of the ancient mountains. The desire of the everlasting hills may there be upon Joseph's head, upon the crown of the one set apart from his brothers. Benjamin is a ravening wolf. In the morning he devours spoils, and in the evening divides plunder. When we think about King Saul, king from the tribe of Benjamin, and the story of King Saul. There are these are the tribes of Israel, twelve in all, and this is what their father spoke to them. He blessed them, each one he blessed, with a suitable blessing. Then he charged them and said to them, I'm about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron. 
the Hittite in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah that is next to Mamre in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite as a property for burial. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, and there I buried Leah. The field was purchased along with the cave in it from the sons of Het. When Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, then breathed his last and was gathered to his peoples. Chapter 50, Lamentation for Jacob. Joseph fell upon his father's face, wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. They took 40 days for him because that is how long embalming takes. And Egypt wept 70 days. When the days of formal weeping passed, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh's house, saying, If I found favor in your eyes, please say in Pharaoh's ears, My father made me take an oath, saying, Behold, I'm about to die in my tomb, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, and there you must bury me. So now, please allow me to go up and bury my father, and then return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father just as he made you swear an oath. So Joseph went up to bury his father. Also, all of Pharaoh's servants, the elders of his household, and all of the elders of the land of Egypt went up with him, along with all of Joseph's house, his brothers, and his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and cattle were left in the land of Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very impressive company. When they came to the threshing floor of the bramble on the other side of the Jordan, they mourned there a very great and solemn lamentation. He observed seven days of mourning for his father. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning ritual at the threshing floor of the prickly bush, they said, a solemn mourning ritual this is for the Egyptians. That is why it is named Abel Mizram, which is on the other side of the Jordan. So Jacob's sons did for him just as he commanded them to do. His sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, the field that Abraham bought as a property for burial from Ephron, the Hittite next to Mamre. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all those who went up with him to bury his father. Joseph comforts his brothers. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father had died, they said, maybe Joseph will be hostile toward us and pay us back in full for all the evil we showed him. So they charged Joseph, saying, before his death, your father gave a command, saying, thus you may say to Joseph, please forgive, I beg you, the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they treated you wrongly. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Then Joseph wept when they spoke to him, and his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Yes, you yourselves planned evil against me. God planned it for good in order to bring about what it is this day to preserve the lives of many people. So now don't be afraid. I myself will provide food for you and your little ones. So he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw the third generations of Ephraim's sons. Also the sons of Machir, Manasseh's sons, were born upon Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely take notice of you and will bring you up from this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made Israel's sons swear in an oath, saying, When God takes notice of you, you will bring my bones up from here. So Joseph died at 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. So that promise was made, and 
as you see, as we're going through the, the Torah, we're going to be getting into Exodus um, beginning, beginning next week. Um, when we get to the actual Exodus, um, yes, um, Joseph's bones were brought out of Egypt, as was promised. That promise was made. So to recap, we know that um, when there was fa great famine in the land, and we, we know that Joseph uh, was made governor, basically, of Egypt. He was second in command uh, right underneath Pharaoh. Um, there was famine in the land, and we know that um, the brothers were sent to, to, to Joseph for, for food, for food. For preservation, basically, and on the second trip, actually, Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, and Pharaoh um, basically said, "You know, have have everybody come, and I will give I will allow you to set up in Goshen and, and give you the fat of the land." So Jacob did come to Egypt. We we saw there was um, a reunion of with Jacob and Joseph, and uh, they were reunited, and um, for for 20 years he had believed Joseph had been killed by by wild animals while he was on a mission to check on his older brothers so now he has found him alive and he rejoiced in that um so Jacob lived his final 17 years in Egypt this week's Torah portion begins with Jacob um having Joseph swear that he will not bury him in Egypt, but carry his body back to the promised land. Um, and although God had prospered Jacob and his family in Egypt, it was not his home, and Jacob did not forget God's covenant promise to him and his descendants, the land forever. Um, so this was being addressed here. We see the blessing that was given to Joseph. We we read the blessings to Ephraim and Manasseh, and and actually um, the higher blessing was given to Ephraim. Um, and then um, we see um, at the end of Jacob's earthly life, the question of succession and inheritance arose who would inherit the spiritual leadership of the people of Israel. So Reuben, the firstborn, was disqualified because of his impulsiveness which was demonstrated in his laying with his father's concubine, Bilhah. Simeon and Levi were also disqualified because of their cruel anger, as demonstrated by their mass revenge murder at Shechem. Although Jacob pronounced a blessing over all of his sons while on his deathbed, he reserved his highest blessing for his favorite son, Joseph. Still, even Joseph was not appointed the next leader since his brother's hatred may have compromised the unity that is so necessary for keeping the tribes of Israel together. Since the older brothers were disqualified from the birthright inheritance, the mantle of leadership passed to Judah. And in Hebrew, it, that would, it, it is Yehuda. And Jacob declared this messianic prophecy while blessing him. As we, we, we mentioned, um, Yeshua comes from the tribe of Judah. The scepter will never depart from Judah, nor a ruler's staff from between his feet, until the one comes who owns them both, and to him will belong the allegiance of nations, basically is what was being said. And this passage reveals several things about the Messiah, who Genesis 22 um, verse 18, had already declared would be a male descendant of Abraham. He would be a descendant of Judah. He would be king. He, his rule would extend beyond Israel to include the entire world. Sounds like Yeshua to me. Uh, Yeshua fulfills Jacob's messianic prophecy. Absolutely. Interestingly enough, this messianic prophecy has a temporal element. It reveals that Judah's kingly authority would remain until Messiah comes. And we see that, you know, King David comes from that line. Um, so, and about the same time Yeshua 
Jesus uh, began his ministry, and only a few la few later, the Romans actually murdered him at the execution date. Uh, while the first coming of Yeshua fulfills Jacob's prophecy, at this time it is only partially fulfilled, since only the Gentiles and about 1% of the Jewish people have received him at this point. Um, when he comes the second time to assert his kingship, all the Gentiles and Jewish people will entirely submit to his authority. So um, in Revelation um, chapter 5, verse 5, they will submit to him because Yeshua, the line of the tribe of Judah, of Judah, I'm sorry, the root of David has prevailed. So pronouncing the blessing. So he blessed them that day saying, by you Israel will pronounce blessing saying, God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. This is when he was blessing um, Joseph's two sons. At the close of Jacob's life, Jacob pronounced a blessing that forms the basis of how Jewish people bless their sons. And it's usually to the firstborn um, as we discussed with uh, Esau and Jacob, but that wasn't the case with, with either one of them as well. So, and, and I mentioned when we bring in um, Shabbat on Friday nights, um, this is how um, the sons in the family are blessed with the same blessing Jacob spoke over Ephraim and Manasseh. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And then as, as I had mentioned um, for the daughters, as may, may God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And that is really, um, that is done um, to usher in Shabbat. We may ask what was so special about Ephraim and Manasseh um, that uh, Jacob utilized them. And the traditional explanation is that they were the first Jewish brothers that did not fight. When you think about Cain and Abel and Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, Leah's sons versus Joseph. Um, these two broke the pattern of sibling rivalry that was seen throughout Genesis. It is also thought that Jacob switched his hands blessing the younger Ephraim with the blessing of the firstborn to emphasize that there was no rivalry between them. Now it's interesting to know um, that Ephraim and Manasseh were raised outside the land of Israel in Egypt, a highly secular, ungodly society that served many false gods and practiced sorcery and witchcraft. But these two boys, however, born to a Hebrew father and an Egyptian mother, maintained their faith in the God of Israel as the one true God and went on to establish their own tribes of Israel. Now we can see in our secular world um, when there are uh, that when there's all kinds of idolatry, how you know how how it is very challenging um, to keep a family on the straight path and and worship the one true true God. But this is what we must do. There are so many influences competing for the hearts, minds, and souls of of all of us, um, and definitely for for the next generations coming up which is even more challenging. The, the world is even more fallen than what it has ever been. So may God give us wisdom, grace, and strength to impart faith to the next generation, faith in ourselves, uh, restore faith for those that, that do not, you know, that, that have lost it or uh, actually impart faith to those who have never had it. Um, also faith to our children that they may set their hope in God and keep his commandments, walking in righteousness, kindness, and justice. So we're going to go to the half Torah where we are seeing King David's last instructions. And we're going to be going to 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, David's last instructions. Now, when the time of David drew near to die, he charged his son Solomon saying, I I am going the way of all the earth, so be strong and be a man. Keep the charge of Adonai your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his 
his commandments, his ordinances, and his decrees according to what is written in the Torah of Moses, so that you may succeed in all that you do and wherever you turn, so that Adonai may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your children watch their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you also know what Joab, son of Zerulah, did to me, what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, son of Ner, and Amasa, son of Jether, whom he killed, shedding the blood of war in peacetime and putting the blood of war on his waistband and on his sandals on his feet. So act according to your wisdom and let his gray hair not go down to Sheol in Shalom, but show kindness to the sons of Bar Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table, for they befriended me when I fled from your brother Absalom. Also, behold, you have with you Shimei, son of Gera, and the Benjamite from Beharim, who cursed me with a grievous curse on the day I went to Mahanam. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by Adonai, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now don't let him go unpunished, for you are a wise man, and you will know how to deal with him, and bring his gray hair down to Sheol with blood. Then David slept with his fathers, and buried in the city, and, and was buried in the city of David. The days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and thirty-three years he reigned in Jerusalem. Then Solomon sat upon the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was established firmly. Okay, so Solomon, David, we're, we're talking about the from the tribe of Judah, which of course Solomon would also be in the tribe of, of Judah. Thinking back to what Joseph said, the scepter will not leave Judah. So here we here we are. Um, so I'm going to recap here um, once again um, the Torah and the half Torah, and then we're going to um, do a closing prayer for this segment and take a short break. Now, once again, Jacob lived his final 17 years of his life in Egypt. Before his passing, he asked Joseph to take an oath that he would bury him in the Holy Land. So he blessed Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, elevating them to the status of his own sons. So that's how that the tribes, uh, the tribe of, uh, of uh, Joseph is, is split. Um, elevating them to the status of his own sons as progenitors of tribes within the nation of Israel. So you're going to have the half, you know, Joseph's. You'll have uh, Manasseh and Ephraim as part of part of the tribes of Israel. The patriarch desires to reveal the end of days to his children, but is prevented from doing so. So Jacob blesses his sons, assigning to each his role as a tribe. Judah will produce leaders, legislators, and kings. Priests will come from Levi, scholars from Issachar, seafarers from Zebulun, school teachers from Simeon, soldiers from Gad, judges from Dan, olive growers from Asher, and so on. Reuben is rebuked for confusing his father's marriage bed. Simeon and Levi for the massacre of Shechem and the plot against Joseph, Naphtali is granted the swiftness of a deer, Benjamin the ferociousness of a wolf, and Joseph is blessed with beauty and fertility. Now, Jacob died in a large funeral procession consisting of Jacob's descendants, Pharaoh's ministers, the leading citizens of Egypt, and the Egyptian cavalry accompanied Jacob on his final journey to the Holy Land where he is buried in the Machpelah cave in Hebron. At the end of the Torah portion, Joseph, too, died in Egypt at the age of 110. He, too, instructed that his bones be taken out of Egypt and buried in the Holy Land. But this would come to pass only with the Israelites' exodus from Egypt many years later. Before his passing, Joseph conveys to Benai Israel the testament from which they will draw their hope and faith in the difficult years to come. 
Now remember, Abraham was given that vision of, of, of the captivity and that also was told that they would come out, uh, be led out by God's hand. God will surely remember you and bring you up out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is exactly what Joseph told his sons. In the half Torah, we see King David um, in, on his deathbed, and he delivers a message to his son and successor, Solomon, echoing, echoing again um, the Torah portion um, and discussing at length Jacob's parting words and instructions um, to his son. So that it, it actually echoes what parallels what Jacob is telling his sons. King David is saying to Solomon, um, and King David encouraged Solomon to be strong, to remain steadfast in his belief in God, and this will ensure his success in all his endeavors, as well as the continuation of the Davidic dynasty. David then goes on to give his son some tactical instructions pertaining to various people who did him wrong uh, and deserve punishment or reward um, uh, for those that helped him. For their actions during his reign. And the half Torah portion concludes with David's death and his burial in the city of David. King Solomon then takes his father's place and his sovereignty is firmly established. And that is the end of the Torah and the half Torah portion. Um, we can see this is, you know, this is so important to, to look at this and, and to look at you know, where we are now um, and how, how history has, has moved through, the, through these tribes. And yes, Yeshua comes from the tribe of Judah and he will be coming to rule and reign. That has been prophesied in the words that we just read today. Join me in our closing, in our closing prayer and we'll take a short break. Avina Malkano, our Father, our King, we thank you for this powerful message. We thank you for all the prophecies that you have shown us through the entire Bible and how it led to Yeshua and how it will lead to Yeshua's second coming, which we so greatly look forward to. We thank you for you are a God of order. You are a God of righteousness. You are a holy God who sets your word for us to follow that we are able to know what it is that you expect from us, your people. We thank you, Father God, for, for your most holy word. We thank you for who you are. You are mighty. You're, you're almighty. You're our creator. You're everything. There is no one, no one that could even come close to you. We love you, Father God. We worship you. We praise you. We give you the glory and honor. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen. Amen. Go ahead and take a short break. We will resume Shabbat service, come back with the second segment and, and do the Brit Kadashah scriptures and uh, do the altar call and then bring Shabbat to a close. <laughs> 